So, hi, I'm Monica. I just want to talk to you about the four new sockets on the list and a little bit about sake in general. So, I think that the easiest way to sell sake in a restaurant that is has a strong wine program is to try to talk to, about sake in as wine-like ways as possible. So, I can tell you as much as you want to know about production and vocabulary words, but I just don't know if they're that useful on the floor, especially with you know, people have a limited amount of attention span that they're going to give you when deciding on what, what sake. So I think a couple things to remember about uh, tasting sake and sake in general is that sake is very, like, evolves a lot in the glass, just like a, a wine does. So I think you really want to give people a chance to smell and swirl their sake, and it does really change as it opens up. Um, it's really hard to use the same sensibility when you're evaluating the potential of pairing a beverage with food as you would with wine, because wine is so much about acidity and tannins, and sake doesn't have tannins and it's very low in acidity. So when we taste sake and you think about pairing with food, I like to think a lot more about texture and minerality and umami. Um, so this is actually kind of an interesting lineup to talk about umami, because I think umami is a really misunderstood concept, and people know that it's this extra percent sense that it's not sweet, sour, salty, bitter. but but I think people just kind of decide that anything delicious is umami sometimes. So, so we'll talk about the different, uh, sake has so much amino acid and glutamic acid and cystic acid that creates this perception of umami that makes it, kind of elevates dining experience where you have the wine and the food pairing and then with the sake food you're taking it to a different place. So I think when people have challenges with pairing food with sake, it's because they're trying to make it like a wine. Uh, and so when we taste these, I want to talk a lot about like aromas and flavor profile. Um, a couple of misconceptions. People are often very confused about the alcohol content of sake. These are all around 14, 15, 16 percent. They're pretty close to wine. And uh, sake is another misconception is dry. I think a lot of people probably ask you for dry sake, and that's what people ask me for all the time. Um, dry is a difficult concept with sake because with all of these sakes, all the fermentable sugars are converted into alcohol. So there's no real measurable residual sugar. But you're going to taste these, and you're going to say, oh, they all taste so sweet. And I think it's because, A, it's they're low in tart acids. B, rice is a sweet flavor. So even if all the sugar has been fermented, it's still going to taste like that sweet rice flavor. And C, I think we're really used to tasting sugar in wine, which is fructose. And so when you taste sake sugar, which is glucose, it hits your palate in a very different way. So when people ask for dry, I always, like, all these sakes are dry. So I try to use different descriptors. And so ideally, like, when we taste these, I think rather than putting the emphasis on understanding the type of rice that's used or you know the yeast strain or the fermentation temperature or the length of fermentation, I think being able to describe it and, and being able to describe why all these four taste different and what I think is the most important thing. So let's focus on that, but if you have any more technical questions, we can totally talk about that too. Is that good to start? Good, yes. Okay.